We're also going to Tahiti. Emil Alcala is joining us, a phys geophysicist Hello. at Northwestern University, speaking to us from the Pacific Island of Tahiti, um, where he is on a research visit to the uh, Laboratoire de Geophysique. The center serves as a tsunami warning center for Polynesia. Uh, welcome to Democracy Now!, Professor. Tell us what is happening in Tahiti right now. Hello. Well, in Tahiti right now, we are just about starting a red alert, uh, which means that the, uh, the shorelines will be evacuated. Uh, we are monitoring the situation in Hawaii, of course. Uh, we have, to some extent, the luxury of time, because the waves will not come until 7 o'clock, which is four hours from now, uh, because of a, of a greater distance. Um, we are uh, monitoring. We've run a number of simulations, and uh, we are uh, uh, we, we are really eager to know what's going on in Hawaii at this point. Uh, the sirens should be ringing in, uh, in Tahiti uh, probably momentarily. And explain what, yes, we can, explain what kind of warnings are going out, what are you telling people to do, and explain for us exactly uh, the, how a tsunami works uh, after this great quake that, um, well, is being called one of the biggest, if not the biggest, recorded. Um, well, uh, first of all, uh, yes, indeed, it's, a, it's, a, it's the biggest earthquake in Japan recorded since we have instruments to record them, which means something on the order of 120, 130 years uh, of records. Um, now, what, uh, what happens is you shake the bottom of the ocean, and that disturbs the water, and uh, essentially in the same way that if you kick a bucket, uh, you're going to create a ripple which propagates at the surface of the water. And uh, on a much greater scale, this is what's happening in the, in the Pacific Ocean. We've kicked the bottom of the, uh, of the ocean, and we've deformed it in Japan, and there is a ripple propagating all across the ocean at, at present. Um, now, what, uh, what we are doing here, as scientists, we have been in touch throughout the night. We have been in touch with civil defense authorities and the governor's office, and uh, um, it is their decision, of course, to order an evacuation which has just been ordered, and uh, that means that uh, the sirens will, uh, will sound uh, in, uh, in all the islands, wake up those residents which, which are not aware of the situation yet, and uh, uh, they, um, they will move to higher grounds uh, to be out of harm's way. Interestingly enough, uh, I think yesterday or the day before, uh, on the eastern shore of Tahiti, there was a tsunami drill where the, the students in the high schools and, uh, and some uh, critical um, uh, communities were, were asked to, uh, in a sense, uh, rehearse evacuation during a tsunami. So <laughs> they should certainly know very well what to do. Um, the memory is fresh and, and the awareness is there. Uh, so this is... Um, uh, this is what's going to happen. The people are going to, to move uh, away from the shoreline to, um, uh, to locations which are, which are out of harm's way. And, Professor O'Connor, have you gotten any indication in terms of other islands that are closer to the, to the epicenter of the earthquake? I'm thinking of many of the offshore Japanese islands, possibly even Okinawa, in terms of the impact there. Well, this is, uh, this is very different because, you see, Okinawa is in the, in the Ryukyu's. And this is in a completely different direction from, uh, from the, the epicenter. Uh, and it turns out that tsunamis are extremely directive, and the, the, the bulk of the energy goes at right angles from the fault. So this is why it goes into the Pacific, uh, the Pacific Ocean, into an area where you don't have too many islands in the first place. We, we have, we've had reports at Midway Island of uh, 1.5 meters, um, and uh, we are monitoring the situation in Tarawa, Johnston, and, and, uh, and other islands. And, of course, we are very eager to know what's going on in Hawaii. We're going to go back to Louis Carlet in a minute, but, Professor O'Call, I just wanted to ask you, I mean, the casualty figures now are set at 40, though expected to be higher, but the scary, frightening images that we're seeing indicate it would be far higher. In fact, we heard possibly a ship is lost at sea of 100 people, but the frightening image of the tsunami um, uh, coming up on land on Japan. Uh, talk about exactly what you understand happened. Sure, you're in Tahiti, but this is your expertise. Uh, what, what happens, well, this is what we've seen on, on television, you know, the, uh, the, um, the wave uh, 
reaches the shoreline and does not necessarily uh, behave like a uh, like a regular wave on, on the on the ocean which breaks at the shoreline it has the it, it has the capacity to actually um, to, to actually rise a little bit as a tide and to move inland uh, sweeping uh, everything which it finds in, in its path uh, cars houses boats uh, you name it and, and these are the images that we've seen and at this point uh, um, you know man is is completely powerless and uh, uh, certainly we we are going to look at figures which are much higher that than the the, um, the numbers that, that you quoted. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we reach a thousand or, or more casualties. Uh, it's, uh, uh, Japan is very well prepared. Uh, there is a great deal of awareness. The population is well educated, but in a disaster of this, of this kind, uh, the figures are going to, uh, to rise. Uh, that's unavoidable. Uh